Hi, my name is John, and for those of you who aren't familiar, I'm working on getting my master's degree in clinical male health counseling. And so today, I'm going to be taking a look at another one of the unused counseling sessions from Persona 5 Royal, and this time it'll be Dr. Maruki's conversation with Haru and how it compares to the one actually in the game. So, if you like this kind of content and you want to see more of it coming from this channel, Make sure to like the video, subscribe, and why even ringing that notification bell so you never miss another upload. And make sure to share this video wherever you like sharing things because it helps the channel out so incredibly much. But with all that out of the way, let's just jump into the video. All right, so let's Come see in. how to do this time. Around. Welcome. Please make yourself comfortable. Uh, yes. I'm sorry. I'm here of my own accord, but I admit I'm not the best at speaking my mind. Oh, no, don't worry about that. Actually, would you care for a snack first? Feel free to chow down. Okay. So, something that no matter what counseling session, whether it's a good session overall, whether it's a bad session overall, something that Dr. Maruki always does really, really well is that initial interaction to try and get the client, so in this case, Haru, comfortable in the situation that they're in because a lot of times in counseling and we've talked about this more times than we could probably count but going to a counselor especially if it's in probably more of a required situation like at shujin academy where all of the students need to talk to a counselor it can be really intimidating or even in haru's situation let's say that she came completely of her own accord it can be really anxiety inducing to talk about the things that may be bothering you with someone that you likely haven't had much of any interaction with before. And so I think it's great that he is always like, come on, let's hang out. Let's have a snack. Just relax and we can go at your pace, which is a great way to set the scene, especially considering the environment that they're in, you know? They're in a nurse's office, and he's done a good job of trying to make it a little bit more comfortable with the couches and the nice coffee table. But it is a very sterile and almost like intimidating environment. And so making sure that there's nothing in between them so that it can just be a conversation between the two of them, I think is absolutely fantastic. I'd say, as always, lose the lab coat. That can be a little bit intimidating, but other than that, fantastic as always thank you so I've been spending a great deal of time thinking about my father I noticed that there are even times where I don't even get around to taking care of myself now before we actually listen to what he has to say I need to express that I hate that they cut this out of the game maybe not necessarily needing to have it in this counseling context but this is the only real time at least that i can remember where she displays some genuine depressive symptoms which is very understandable considering the circumstances regarding her father's death of course she would mourn of course she would be sad of course she might have trouble doing day-to-day -day activities it makes complete sense, but this isn't something that we necessarily actually get to see or experience in Persona 5 Royal itself. And so I'm curious as to see how Maruki broaches this. And I guess I understand maybe why they took it out. Maybe they thought it would feel forced if she just started spilling her guts about her feelings about her father to someone she just met. But Haru isn't Ryuji, she doesn't necessarily keep it that close to the vest like maybe would be more characteristic of Ryuji. She's a little bit more open with the people around her, so I, I think it would have made sense in this context, but I, that being said, I do like the counseling conversation that they had that actually made it into the game. So. I don't know, uh, we'll see where it goes from here, but... <sighs> Anyone who's endured what you have would feel the same way. Is that so? Your everyday life has been stolen away by someone. 
through no fault of your own. That can cause some people to fall so deep into okay. depression that they find themselves unable to do anything. In the world we live in, there are countless people going through that situation. So, I can kind of see where he's going with this, but I think he's doing it in such a heavy-handed way that I don't love it. Because he's trying to set the stage to illustrate to Haru that she is not alone in this experience, that this, this feeling of loss is not something exclusive to her. Loads of people feel it. And while I get that approach, a lot of times, if you just lost a loved one, that may not be the best thing to hear, that loads of people are feeling what you're feeling. It almost takes away the individualized experience from the individual. Because me, as a counselor, if I was talking to a client, I have not ever experienced, even if I've experienced a similar situation to them, I do not feel what they are experiencing. I don't know exactly what your internal experience feels like. And so that's the job is to try and work together so that maybe I can come to more of an empathetic understanding and help to work through it collaboratively, you know? Not everyone feels the exact same thing. Not every situation is the same. And so it almost feels undermining the way he's wording this. And I don't love that. And as we learn as we progress in the game, we know that he's bringing personal baggage into this session, whether it's used or unused. This dialogue is bringing that personal baggage out to the forefront because he has lost people that are important to him in his life. And so in his mind, he probably truly believes that he is understanding exactly what she is going through, which in reality, his experiences are profoundly different from hers and they should not be treated as the exact same. Having empathy and sympathy with someone because you've experienced something similar is one thing, trying to almost tell them what they feel is completely different. And so I wouldn't recommend as a counselor shifting the attention to your own experience because that could leave the client feeling completely unheard, almost invalidated potentially. And uh, it's so early in the conversation that, woof, okay. Let's see how Haru responds to this. Erky, could you have experienced it as well? I've gotten past it through no small effort. And he continues to keep the lens on him, saying he's gotten past it with no small effort. Like, I, geez, I get it. You've had a hard life, Maruki, but it is your job to work with the students, not have this be your own little venting ground. There should be a separation between your personal life and your professional life. And as a counselor, that separation needs to be very distinct. Now, I'm not saying, I'm by no means saying that you should never self-disclose. But in a circumstance like this, where a student comes in and they need to talk about the very recent and very public loss of their father, maybe it's not best to turn it into a woe is me session because Haru even asks him, have you experienced something like this before? Completely, the, all of the attention is now on Maruki instead of Haru. And I think I'm starting to see why they didn't actually use this voice dialogue and this session in particular. Cause the session that they did use Makes Maruki look great. It wasn't as focused on Haru's current issues at the time, namely her father's death, and instead kind of focuses on her inherent loneliness, which I really dug, but it showed some competence 
from Maruki that he was getting better as the game progressed at being a counselor. And that was awesome to see. And so this, yeah, I'm I'm getting it now. I'm, get, I'm getting why it's unused. So, okay, cool, I guess. I see. What would you recommend I do to get past my own situation? You just need to discover the right approach. But how? I've got a tip for that. Imagine something that you find enjoyable, then simply mentally expand on that thing or activity. What do you mean by that? It's a game okay. plan for staying positive. When you fall prey to negative thoughts, you begin losing sight of what's around you. Okay. For example, okay. what kind of person do you want to be next year? What would you do to make your loved ones proud of you? Okay, so I think that this is a premium case of right idea, wrong execution. Because while I love the fact that he is kind of starting to delve into these more future-oriented goals and planning so that she can start working to overcome some of these more depressive symptoms, it doesn't feel much like a conversation. It doesn't feel like he's actually facilitating her to actually come to her own conclusions via her own strength, which empowering and helping the client to be able to come up with their own conclusions is really good. And he starts out on this path. I think that had this not ended with that example of how to make her parents proud, I think that this would have been perfect. But because he had kind of that leading question, what would you do to make your parents proud? After already asking kind of more of that future-oriented question, she now has to choose between, okay, which question do I choose first? I guess recency bias, I'll just choose the one that was asked to me most recently, which is about her parents or her family, or what would she do to make them proud? And so I don't think that that's great because she just lost her father. We don't even really know, I would imagine, that she does not have a mother. She, the mother's never really in the picture. Does she even have any family left? Not, not really from what we see in the game. And so I don't think this is great practice because being bombarded with those questions, kind of being led to what Maruki wants to talk about, not necessarily what Haru wants to talk about, because she just wants to kind of work through her feelings with her dad and surrounding his loss, which is what she came into the session for. It's kind of taken this strange left turn. How can she make him proud? And so it just feels tone deaf to me. Like, it's great it's great to push the plot forward if this were to actually have been used in the game because this gives Maruki premium content for him to actualize and create a perfect world for her in the future. I would say it almost gives him more ammunition for the actualization than the scene that was actually used. But we don't know what that question could have done. That could have really hit her hard, which it doesn't because if she got really upset with Maruki, it, would, it wouldn't paint him in a great light. It would kind of ruin the whole, like, Maruki is the antagonist in the third semester thing. They don't want to shine him in a hugely bad light when he is meant to be this very kind and empathetic character, so to throw you off the scent of the twist, and I get that. But in a real circumstance, that's a risky question to ask because they could take it very poorly and you may not be able to get past the walls that they immediately put up in that instance because you're talking about how to make your family proud right after they lost essentially what is most of their family. So, not great. Not a great showing from Dr. Maruki. But, okay, let's continue. What would I do to make a loved one proud? Oh, but... Did nothing come to mind? Okay, small gripe. 
if we're making small gripes. Um, him asking, did nothing come to mind? This could have completely shut down the conversation because let's say that something did come to mind. Maybe it's something that she doesn't want to talk about. We see here in a little bit, spoiler alert, that he asks if she's comfortable talking about it. But because he asked, did nothing come to mind, if she wasn't comfortable talking about it, she could have just said, no, nothing came to mind, and they would have just moved on with the session. And this nugget that could have potentially been fantastic and is good to talk about that they end up talking about, it could have been lost completely just because she maybe felt a little bit of discomfort. Maybe she did have some walls go up, could have been completely lost because he asked this closed ended question. So I would have, if it were me, I would have asked a much more open ended question such as what's coming to mind? That way, if nothing's coming to mind, they're like, ah, I can't really think of anything. Or if something does come to mind, it does prompt them. They can't just be like, yes or no, they have to give a more fully fleshed out answer, more of a statement to answer that what kind of question. So, I... okay, okay, it, it's not you, so it's, it's no, this isn't actually Maruki's character, so I can't get too upset with the man, I can't get too upset with him. And, I should say that this is in part my own personal preference. Different counselors may likely have different opinions of this because every single counselor has a different counseling style. So I do want to preface with that statement in particular because some I could see some arguing that this wasn't the worst thing that he could possibly do. I just, I personally would not have. So... Uh, no, that's not it. I was able to imagine something. I see. Would you feel comfortable sharing it with me? And him asking that question of, would you feel comfortable sharing it with me? That That's fantastic. I have to give that to him. Because when talking about such sensitive issues, making sure, checking in, making sure that they are comfortable with the situation and the conversation that's happening is really, that's really good because you don't want to pry the information, rip it out of them forcibly, because that's just going to... Uh, it's likely that they may not come back if they feel like you're just trying to rip and psychoanalyze and just like pick them apart mentally. So making sure that they are comfortable with the conversation as it's progressing forward and keeping them in control of the session really important because you may know where you want to go with this conversation as the counselor but what's important is that they are comfortable with where the conversation is going and that it is their choice to disclose what they are disclosing it's important to sometimes have the client get outside of their comfort zone to push them towards that growth but not ripping them out of their comfort zone. So I love that check-in. It's fantastic. I'm helping Okumura Foods grow with my father watching over me. That's what I imagine doing to make a loved one proud. But that's entirely imaginary. After all, my father is no longer with me. That's not necessarily true in every way. It's rather common for people to think of loved ones who have left as still being alive in their own hearts, isn't it? No matter who it is or what's happened to them, you're always free to hold them dearly in your heart. I believe such thinking can eventually, in some way, shape, or form, manifest in reality. Imagination is defined as the act of mentally creating something, and it often results in the physical creation of Sorry, I'm starting to sound more like a teacher than a counselor, aren't I? Okay, this is just, this, this, this monologue right here is why they did not include this in the game. Him, like, going on this huge, like, essentially it's a cognitive science rant that explains exactly what he's going to do with his actualization. Okay, I, like, bad counseling methods 
aside. This is why. Because <laughs> he's literally just explaining kind of the whole concept behind the actualization. And on a first playthrough, I feel like maybe it would be interesting to have this, like, uh, kind of to look back on in subsequent playthroughs to see, like, oh my gosh, he just literally explained cognitive science and his actualization plot. But this isn't all that helpful in a real counseling session. It is very, like, this mystical, like, things can materialize if you think hard enough and if you believe and her father is 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 dead you know uh, her father has passed away and so you should be focused on helping her to develop her coping mechanisms coping styles what she can do to move forward that conversation about okumura foods is great but maybe working up to taking over the family business so that she can really uh, feel empowered and really setting her up for success. Maybe working on creating a game plan, setting small, uh, small objectives to reach an overarching goal would be more recommended instead of, oh, you got a plan? Okay, I'm gonna talk about cognitive science. Okay, that's time. Like, come back if you want, you know? Like, creating a game plan so that she can very much be set up for success. And we know that Haru ends up killing the game. She's great. But in this context, giving her that extra little leg up would have really been beneficial and even encouraging her a little bit more, which we'll see in a little bit, encouraging her a little bit more to come back and have subsequent sessions would have been really beneficial. I get why they didn't, but that would have been better. <laughs> As from a counseling perspective, not not necessarily from a writing perspective. I don't think that having 10 Haru Maruki counseling sessions would be in super enjoyable for anyone, but maybe me. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that would have been cool if they had been optional. No, I think you make for a very capable counselor. Thanks. What would make my father proud? I feel like he'd be proud to see just how much I've grown. May I take that to mean you've found a possible strategy to approaching your loss? What's the strategy? What's the strategy? Did I miss it? Like, I, I guess I get, like, the Okumura Foods part. But again, going back to what we just talked about with the goals thing. It's so not concrete. Like, the... Yes, I'll give it a try. Anything can be realized if you wish for it. I know it's true. Ah, I think that's our time. Speaking with you is very helpful. Thank you, Dr. Marky. The pleasure's been all mine. My door is always open if you need to bend an ear. So, as always, I love that he says my door's always open. I think he should have more strongly encouraged her to come back to talk with him, but I'm sure he's very busy. That's, again, in an ideal world, I would love to see subsequent sessions to actually flesh out and develop goals and make things much more um, measurable. Like, are, how are you taking measurable steps? Because in counseling, you want to be able to take measurable steps to show your development and your progress. And that just doesn't happen here. And everything just ends up being very vague in terms of what was actually achieved in this short counseling session. And so... While I love seeing this alternative kind of reality for what could have been in uh, the Persona 5 Royal, I think I agree with the writers and everyone at Atlas who decided that uh, maybe this wouldn't be the move in terms of the actual narrative. I think in terms of hinting at what the third semester is, I think it was a little bit heavy-handed. I think that 
overall, he was just a way better counselor in the one that actually made it into the game because there were so many just follies and just shortcomings with what he was doing. It was he was kind of insensitive. He was kind of trying to force his ideas onto her. And he turned it onto himself for a brief period of time. It just, th there was so much wrong with this session that while there were nuggets of good, he, he kind of pushed towards that more future-oriented goal-setting mindset, which I think is fantastic, and that's something that he should have done. I think he started out the session super well, as always. I think that he is great at being personable and a very likable dude, but no, no, this is one, this, I would, I would argue that it's by no means as bad as the Sumire session. It's, it, it's up there though. <laughs> it's pretty high up there. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't do that, Maruki. That's, I guess that's my closing word for this one. <laughs> that's, I'm glad that this is not what happened. But as always, I want to pass the question off to you. Do you like Dr. Maruki? Do you like this session? Why or why not? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section down below. And while you're down there, this video and all of the videos take a lot of effort to make. So it would really mean a lot that if you made it this far, that you would hit that subscribe button because it helps the channel out so incredibly much. And while you're subscribing, why ring that notification bell so you never miss another upload. But as always, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day, a fantastic rest of your week, and why not even a fantastic rest of your month. And I will see you in the next video. And Happy New Year. Later.